All right, my name is Mark Obanel. I'm the director for the Digital Media Arts and Engineering Program here at LSU, and we're in a brand new building uh, called the Digital Media Center. Let's start with the actual Digital Media Center and talk a little bit about how this came about between LSU and Electronic Arts. Um, yeah, this is a public-private partnership. So on the first two floors, we have the Center for Computational Technology here at LSU. And on the third floor, we have the North American Test Center for Electronic Arts. So they do the testing for uh, a whole bunch of the North American developed products that EA makes. Now, you came from Electronic Arts. Let's talk about your background as a game developer. Right. I started in television um, and then in the very early 90s moved to video games way back when we were making Genesis games and uh, Amiga games. I worked on, let me see, one, what was one of the earliest titles I worked on? I worked on uh, Bill Elliott's NASCAR Challenge um, on for the Amiga, God knows which. Um, and then uh, worked on the very first FIFA Soccer on the Sega Genesis. So uh, I stayed in video games for about 15 years. I was an executive producer, vice president on FIFA Need for Speed, uh, Def Jam Vendetta, uh, Marvel Nemesis, and a whole bunch of games at EA. How did you end up going from making games to now teaching people how to make games? Um, well, that's interesting. So uh, I, I think in about uh, 2008, I really was tired of just dealing with products. Uh, and dealing with the stress of deadlines. So I wanted to give back to the community and I thought the best way to do it was to go into teaching. So try and uh, uh, impart some of the wisdom and lessons I learned over a, a few decades of making games to the next generation of game makers. Um, so how did you end up going from the Burnaby, Vancouver area with EA to now Louisiana State University in Baton Rouge? So what I wanted to do was move into uh, a more a senior academic role, which is difficult for someone who has a professional background rather than an academic background. So normally, if you're in academia, you go and you uh, uh, get your bachelor's degree, your master's degree, your terminal degree, your PhD, maybe you get a postdoc, and then you move into a faculty position at a university. Um, since I spent most of my career working, I only got a bachelor's degree back in the late 80s, and there was nothing about multimedia, video game, interactive studies at all back then. Um, you know, I would have had to go back to school get my master's and PhD degree, which I didn't want to do. So one of the things that was an opportunity here was the ability to run a postgraduate program uh, uh, with my professional credentials as opposed to my academic credentials. What are your thoughts about, <laughs> what are your thoughts about the fact that this actually exists today? Because back when you were getting involved in games, none of this infrastructure existed at a college or university level. Yeah, I mean, I think part of that is just uh, Moore's Law. Uh, uh, back when I was making, in the early days of video games, uh, uh, Silicon Graphics, the machine you needed to make 3D graphics was about $100,000 if you wanted to get an Onyx uh, uh, with software and everything loaded up on it. So the equipment cost was so expensive, typical universities and colleges couldn't afford the equipment needed to train. So the industry trained the staff. I mean, I came, in, I came into the industry knowing less than I'd say graduates today go into the industry um, just because of access to hardware and software now is so much uh, greater for students. A lot of the professional software that uh, uh, companies like Electronic Arts and Activision use um, is available for free for students. So, Can you talk a little about uh, how you've seen students gravitate towards game development and how the current mass acceptance of video games across all platforms is inspiring people to want to get into this uh, career? You know, when I started working in games, everyone said, oh, so you work for a toy company or you make kids products, right? Like everyone assumed when I was in the beginning, uh, uh, in the early 90s, that we were just dealing with teenage boys. That's all. And we were dealing with content that maybe wasn't that great. So I've got a lot of sneers about, oh, you work in games, right? Um, but now it's a very aspirational field to be in. I, I think there's probably uh, more kids who want to work in games and want to work in film uh, uh, and game programs that a lot of post-secondary institutions are bigger than the film programs at post-secondary institutions. So I think culturally it's now expanded from ki not only kids but toddlers, uh, uh, pre-k, adults. They're even making games for uh, uh, retirees, senior citizens to keep your brain working. Um, so you know I, I don't think there's a demographic that hasn't been covered by games and I think it's been widely accepted uh, um, and it's you know, one of the biggest entertainment industries when it comes to uh, total revenue driven from hardware and software. So.